Alright, so this is around the time of year where apparently everybody gets super excited about NBA Live's comeback. Talking about how NBA Live is going to accomplish this, this, and this. They're going to take back this kind of market share, and then 2K should be super worried because NBA Live is on their ass. Now, I I'm going to talk about it. Alright, I'm going to give my opinion on it. Let's get into it. First of all, I'm sick. I'm going to try not to yell, although I'm talking pretty loud right now. My throat is hurting. I've been popping like 20 or 30 of these. Can't possibly be healthy, but it's what I've been doing. Before we even get into the video, anytime I criticize 2K, everybody goes, Yeah, you know what? That's true. Agent is always spitting facts. I agree with this guy right here. Anytime I criticize NBA Live, NBA Live fanboys, for whatever reason, you're either a sheep or you're getting paid by 2K because it's impossible to have an opinion that's negative about NBA Live. So any sort of criticism I bring here is, 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 is straight unbiased, just automatic truth. And if you want some truth, I've been paid by NBA Live. But I've never been paid by 2K. So if I was gonna be biased towards anybody, it would be NBA Live. Unless you count the Kyrie threes I got from 2K. Dead stock, on sale for $2,000, hit me up, serious offers only. All right, so let's get into it. People always talk about this comeback every single year. NBA Live 10 came out, and then we didn't see no Live 11, we didn't see no Elite 12 or Elite 13, and that's what they called it, apparently they changed their name. Then they changed it back to Live 14. Live 14 was the next game to come out. There was a drought of three years where no NBA Live game came out. Around that time, I was super excited. They had three years to develop a basketball game. I thought that it was gonna be a serious comeback. I was super optimistic. People were making their comeback videos. You know, everybody was all excited. NBA Live was the worst basketball product to ever come out in the history of ever. And here we think to ourselves, nothing could be worse than NBA Live 14. NBA Live 15 comes out, and all we could say about it, the most positive thing, is it was a step in the right direction. From the worst game ever, you literally could not have went backwards, so that was the most positive thing you could say. NBA Live 16 is coming out, you're thinking to yourself, man, they're gonna switch off the Ignite engine, now they're gonna switch to the Frostbite engine, and all these rumors are coming now and we're thinking to ourselves yo this is the year they're gonna do the comeback it's gonna be super exciting and live 16 was it was just it was just it was another step in the right direction see where i'm going here they've never made any major transformational leaps i don't know why we still have the expectation that they should throughout all this time live is pushing like three four hundred thousand products meanwhile nba 2k is pushing like four or five million that on top of the incredibly egregious microtransactions nba 2k sells it was super clear that 2k had literally all the market share but something interesting happened because no NBA Live 17 dropped, right? They delayed the game and then they eventually just said, nah, no Live 17 is coming out. And so here we go. We have this, this area of opportunity because now we have two years to develop a product. Now we were sure, for sure, for sure, Frostbite is going to be introduced. Everybody's super excited about the graphical changes that are going to be coming, all the changes to shading, potentially animations are going to look better. And then Live 18 comes out and it was just another step in the right direction. Yeah, it's gonna be another step. They spent a whole year, in that case for Live 18, two years on the game. It's gonna be a step. But we were looking for transformational changes that would almost warrant a quote unquote comeback so that 2K could be worried or whatever. An article came out a few weeks ago talking about how Take Two underperformed because NBA 2K was doing badly. And it was nothing that NBA Live did, it was literally because of Fortnite. Weirdly enough, it wasn't even a sports title that had to put pressure on NBA 2K. It was a third person uh, battle royale game? So here we are, again, this year where the same people are again optimistic for whatever reason that NBA Live 19 is gonna be the year that NBA 2K should be worried and NBA Live is gonna do a comeback. And in my mind, if they had two years to do it last year and they still couldn't accomplish it i don't know what changes they could have made in the last year since nba live 18's launch that would somehow warrant some sort of serious comeback so there's some major issues i see with nba live and i'm gonna touch on those before i start talking about the positive stuff for me the biggest issue is the animations not only the lack of animations but how they look as well the animations look floaty they don't look realistic they look ridiculous that on top of the fact that there's not nearly enough dribble packages not enough jump shots you can't mix and weave jump shots with the jump shot creator. There's no park mode. I mean, there is a pro-am mode, but it's bare bones relative to 2K. And I think 2K has a bare bones pro-am mode. So what, I don't know what that says about... <laughs> NBA Live has to fix their latency issue. I thought NBA 2K had the worst latency in the industry. No, 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 no. Here I am enjoying Rainbow Six and Fortnite where I have like 36 millisecond ping. On NBA 2K, I'm pushing two, 300. On NBA Live, it's even worse. It makes it impossible to react online. It makes the gameplay sluggish and slow. Like that has to be improved. The court design looks fantastic. Whoever is working on the level design for NBA Live needs an automatic pay raise. Pay those guys. NBA 
Live always has a better presentation and soundtrack than 2K, for whatever that's worth. The career mode on NBA Live is a pathetic joke. It is a, a literal joke. The fact that I have to sit through the incredibly boring and useless Stephen A. Smith cutscenes makes NBA 2K18 look like the best story mode I've ever played in my life. L like, it's so incredibly useless. The player progression is even worse on NBA Live than it is on 2K, and 2K is already pretty bad at it themselves. There's a lot they have to do, just in terms of modes, in terms of variety. But again, I think the biggest thing, again, would be the animations, because the biggest criticism people have is when they see NBA Live, there's just always something off about it. And the NBA Live devs know that. I've talked to them before, and they're really aware of their game's issues, even if they publicly don't come out and say it. So if they know that the issue exists, then the problem is, how do they fix the issue? For whatever reason, they haven't gotten that part of the puzzle solved, and I think that's the biggest puzzle piece. It's almost like finding the corners when you're creating a puzzle. You have to have the corners because it makes everything else building so much easier. I haven't built a puzzle in like a decade. What, do they still sell puzzles? What happened to puzzles? But here we are again talking about some sort of NBA Live 19 comeback. I don't know what people are truly expecting. I think NBA Live is like a good change of pace from 2K. I know plenty of people that started to play NBA Live just because they're so sick of 2K. And given all the controversies and bull that 2K has put themselves through over the last couple years between NBA 2K 17 and 18, with players being deleted, right? With unskippable cutscenes and an abusive amount of advertisements everywhere you look in both 2K 17 and 18. You want to talk about all the problems of corrupted players and, and my team's packs costing so much it's literally you got to go out and work just to find microtransactions so you can open up some of these packs like the progression systems not enough there's no different parks they're recycling parks We're talking about every single issue 2k has dealt with and NBA live hasn't even remotely made a comeback they've actually been on the same pace I don't see how I could be optimistic about that game anymore for NBA Live, all I could ever be is hopeful that they'll figure everything out. But I refuse to believe, because I've, I've done it over the past like six years, that NBA Live is gonna make this comeback and I'm gonna be so excited about it because every time I give them that bit of hope, they come out with a, with a product that at best is just a step in the right direction. DeMar DeRozan took a step in the right direction this year in terms of three-point shooting, but he's still a bad three-point shooter. I can't see a realistic way of how NBA Live 19 is poised for that comeback we've been waiting for. For. I've said it and I'll say it again. I honestly think EA's best bet is to just bring back NBA Street. Don't even bother competing with 2K. What's the point? We've seen the success of NBA Playgrounds 1. Weirdly enough, Playgrounds 2 was canceled. It's a genre in the video game industry that people have been waiting for for so long they've been asking for. It almost reminds me of SOCOM 2. Anytime PlayStation puts out a poll, SOCOM 2 remastered wins every single time. That being said, I'm still hopeful. But you got me up if you expect me to be optimistic about this year's NBA Live. So explain to me, how is this comeback gonna happen? Is it gonna happen because they switched off the Ignite engine finally? Like, what are they adding? Are they adding a new career mode that's different from last year? Are they adding a new player mode where the player progression is better? Are they going deep into Ultimate Team? Is that gonna be how they bring it back? Like, explain to me what is gonna be the difference that they haven't already been trying in the last few years that's gonna be the reason why this year is gonna be some sort of comeback. NBA Live has been putting the game on sale. At one point, I think it was on sale for like $6 in Canada. Listen, if, if at $6 people don't decide they want the game, like, what do you do at that point? You just give it for free? I mean, they could give it out for free and, you know, live off the microtransactions, but I think NBA Live doesn't even have as much microtransactions. They would have to increase the price. That might actually be the best bet. I'm, I'm so serious right now. If NBA Live released their game for free and then just relied on microtransactions to generate revenue for them so they can make consistent improvements, they would be so much better off. And I'm sick of... <laughs> Whoa. I honestly think that's 2K's best bet too. This new trend of free to play games blowing up is actually not a new trend. League of Legends has proved that it's a very good idea off the jump. But to see Fortnite do it on consoles and succeed, we might see some developers actually looking from the from the distance talking about we might just drop our game free to play. And then of course it's free, people can try it out. Why not? The game is free. All they gotta do is download the game. And then at that point you got him, right? You just, if the game is good enough, you'll keep him on the game. And so that might be the move, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not like NBA Live is getting so much sales that it doesn't make sense to drop the game for free because they'll be losing out on so much revenue. And NBA Live is risking pissing off their hardcore fan base that buys the game day one because 
The people that bought NBA Live 18 day one were pissed off when a month later the game was on sale for half price. They were saying they could have just waited to buy the game. I've seen plenty of people disappointed in the thread when NBA Live announced that it was going to be on sale that quickly. You know what? In fact, if NBA Live released their game for free and it was like a one-time release, then I could actually see how that game might be able to come back and take some market share from 2K. Because at free... People like, they, I mean, why would you not try the game out? And at that point, it might just be like people are so used to 2K, they might just have to take a little bit of time playing NBA Live. Since it's free, they'll probably be hopping on the game playing if they're fans of basketball. That That is NBA Live's best hope. Now, I don't know the, the logistics and the numbers behind the situation, but I don't see why they would do anything different. Of course, there's the issue of perceived value. Anytime a game is free, people begin to think that the game is free because it's bad, right? Like when you tell people Fortnite is free for the first time, they're like, what? A game that good is free? Like it almost baffles them because they assume that games that are more expensive tend to be quote unquote better games. The reality is there's been a resurgence of free to play games that's been incredibly fun to play. I'm gonna leave it on that. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. Yo, give me your thoughts on NBA Live, man, for real. Cause I don't see how people could be optimistic about it, but every single year it's like, I've been let down too many times to believe it once again. But I'm curious what you guys think about it. Catch y'all later, I'm out. Peace.